one of the things with, with drug and alcohol policies is that it is sometimes seen in the negative. Um, but one of the biggest sort of positive we've seen is that when a company introduces their drug and alcohol policy and there's, and there's testing part of that, um, they do get to see and, and some people feel more comfortable um, coming forward with a potential depend well with a dependency um, and they've actually then sought the required help and guidance which then turns their life around and there's a lot of good positive stories around that and I think that's one of the key things to highlight with drug and alcohol policy although there is a negative element or it's perceived negatively um, there is a lot of positive um, that comes out of it and it, it is it should be viewed in that way. Um, I think the other thing as well is that the drug and alcohol testing um, shouldn't be seen in isolation. Um, it is just another tool um, to be used. So if you sh if you do have, for example, a, an, an incident or an accident on site, or if you have suspicion that somebody is um, coming into work impaired for drink or drugs, um, the actual test itself forms part of that overall um, investigation. So it shouldn't be seen in isolation. You know, it should be um, seen as part of the overall investigation, for, which will include talking to the donor, doing the tests, and obviously looking at any mitigation factors around that. Um, but obviously it is a good tool to use because it provides specific evidence of whether there is alcohol or drug, drugs present um, at the time.